because I didn't know that it would happen. Um, I had just done Carolina Change with Michael Longhurst and Yi, uh, Nigel Lilly, you know, three of our brilliant creative team, and I loved that experience so much, and I wanted to work with them forever. <laughs> and I literally said to Mike, like, anytime you need somebody, I'll move scenery in the back. Like, I just want to be in a room creating with you. Nick Morrison, uh, one of our producers of the Donmar, is a mega fan, and it's the show that I've been most like hounded about. And I'm like, I, and he was like, listen already. So I took the CD home during lockdown, and I listened to it when we were out running and exercising. And then after Caroline, Janine, you know, and my agent in New York talked to Tom, and it felt like, yeah, it, they were very trusting and generous because it's such a precious you know, precious piece of work and, and it just felt like the moment to bring it to the UK. And I had just started doing Leopold shot on Broadway just in rehearsals uh, about a year ago almost, almost exactly a year ago and I got a message from Mike over Instagram being like, hey, hope it's going great. By the way, I've got the rights to Next Normal and I want you to play Diana. Will you come over? And I was like, um, yeah, yes, I will. My elevated pitch would be Oh, that's hard. That's very hard. I would say Next to Normal is about uh, perseverance through struggle and trauma, and that is both in the home and outside of the home. I think it would be a family and how illness affects not just one person, but the relation, their relationships and the relationships around them. I think just the cascading effect and the domino effect that that brings and how strong we are as people to be able to rise up against that and fortify ourselves around these people. When I'd see Next to Normal is about learning to uh, operate around and love uh, despite of the, 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 the problems that we have in ourselves and, 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 the, and the, the people that we love as well. It's a lot to take in on first hearing this uh, score. That, I think um, that was one of the big sort of um, uh, one of the things to chase a sort of standard, a hurdle to get over is making sure that we deliver all the words and all the messages cleanly uh, for a first time hearer because it, it's complex, really complex stuff. It's a story I grew up with, it's a story I feel very close to. Natalie is everything to me, so to be able to tell this is just wonderful. I'm, I'm so excited we're open. <laughs> I can safely say that I think I was one of those people who's been waiting for it like, forever, uh, who's very much part of the like, why hasn't it been here crowd? Um, this show, I think for loads of people, um, yeah, similar to lots of people, this show was really formative for me in sort of discovering theatre and it was the, the, that infamous like, Tony Awards performance, it was just so amazing. I remember watching it on like the family kitchen computer in Wales and like, it felt so far away, but also so amazing, and I've just been waiting and waiting for a chance to see it. So to be in the room, sort of taking it apart and working on it, has just been like, real magic. Next to normal. This is a generation gap one for me. This is yeah. like, this is not one of the ones that I grew up watching. Because I'm like, I'm, this is the first one where I realized I'm the oldest person in the company. When the hell did that happen? So like, Jack and Jack and and uh, L, they all turn up and they, they just know it off by heart before we've started rehearsals. And I'm going, this is quite complicated. This was hard, this was a proper challenge. Like, I, I, I like to try and pick something that's just far enough outside the comfort zone. Uh, but you feel like you've got a chance of getting there. Yeah, it was, um, you know, I, sp I think after COVID, we all became more aware of how mental illness affects affects us. I think it was something that we never really spoke about before and I think COVID opened us up, as horrible as it was, it opened that conversation up and I think Mike was really clever in the way he timed bringing this in because we're now at a position where people can talk about this. I think that's why you know the audiences have really responded well and I think had we done this you know, pre-COVID, I don't think it would have had the same effect. So I think, yeah, we're really lucky that, um, that the conversation is much more open now. You know, we have people coming to see the show every day and we'll tell each other our stories and bond and connect over this and I think that's why the show has such an incredible base of people who love it so much because we all know, we all bring our own thing to this story and we all feel that love and that misery. <laughs>
Yeah. The idea of, of mental health and, and, and the protection of mental health is something that, that is truly timeless. We understand it better now than we did 10, 20, 30 years ago. But at the same time, it's something that as human beings, we've always struggled with even when we didn't understand it. And so I think that allows people to see a lot of themselves in it at different points. I think different people have different uh, points of, of, of relatability and different points of triggering in the piece itself. Well, like, I don't know, post-pandemic, uh, I think we here have thought about our mental health, which is obviously different to mental illness, but like conversations about being in therapy, being on medication, it, you just... I think it stopped feeling like something that might be those Americans over there. We, we might be ready to acknowledge that, you know, we all have mental health and mental ill health. And, and, and so I'm, I'm really grateful that we got to do it at this time. I loved this show. I was very much a part of this show's fandom. And um, so I know what it's like to really like love something and wait for it. And I hope the people who have been waiting for it that we've done them proud and that they're able to see a, a production that um, they feel is representative of what they love about the show but also helps them discover new new things, new parts of the show, things they might not have thought about. We hope this is a future life but even if this is all we get it will have been such a special moment for all of us. You know I think the cast is so extraordinary. It's easy for Next to Normal to be about Diana and really it's about all of us. It's, Every single actor has brought so much to the piece and we're really a unit and I feel very proud of that fact because it's not a vehicle for any one person. It's truly like, it's very human.